Hey everyone, welcome to another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video I do want to apply some very cool blue and orange color grading on this mountain landscape shot. For this photo that's pretty easily done, so if you want to follow along you can find the link to download the raw file in the description of the video and now let's begin. First off it's important to know I have heavily cropped the image just to frame the scene a little nicer. And with the cropping out of the way I want to go ahead and open up the basic panel. Here I'm changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape to bring up the saturation a bit and also just bring up the darks a little bit. So what I have in mind for this shot is a very warm scene with lots of orange color tones but also a very deep blue sky. I want to start this by making the shot a lot warmer by just bringing up the white balance temperature right around here it looks pretty nice i don't want to add too much yellow looking at this again you can see it's kind of on the darker side with a little underexposure as well but i don't think that's too dramatic in this case i want to change that by bringing up the exposure making this whole image a little brighter and i also want to continue by bringing up the highlights a notch as well as the whites yeah, I'm just very, very careful to not overexpose anything because that would look weird. Now to add contrast, I'm going to bring down the shadows. Just like that. This doesn't affect the underexposed areas much. It would be a different thing if I would bring down the blacks, for example. Here we would get a lot of underexposure. So next up, let's introduce some texture and some vibrance and saturation just to get some more colors going on here perfect at this point we can compare the image to before you can see the colors have changed quite dramatically and the overall image is much much brighter so that is nice while the colors might look a bit strange for the moment don't worry about that we will change it later with the hsl panel and some split toning for now I do want to work on the masking, so let's open up the masking panel and let's see. I do think I want to add a little bit of sunlight coming in from the right side and just adding some very cool and strong glow effect. For that reason let's use a radial gradient. Don't make it too big otherwise this looks strange and I'm also going to tilt it a bit so it's kind of coming down from the right side. And of course I'm making sure to overlap the mountains so we can nicely see the glow effect. So I think that's a good spot right here for the glow. Just bring up the blacks to make the glow stronger. I'm going to drop the dehaze here. Be careful because this can overexpose your image quite fast. In this case we still have some room left for brightness so I'm going to bring up the whites because I want this area to be very, very bright. I actually might want to drop the radial filter down a notch. At the moment, this area does have a very neutral color, which I want to change by just bringing up the temperature. And thus, we're just adding some more warmth in the glow effect. All right, then I do want to work on the sky. For that reason, I am going to use a color range mask and just click in the blue part of the sky. Now this looks like a good selection, however there on the left side the selection does have some problems so I'm just holding down the shift key and again just click in here to pick up this color tone as well. Since I only want to affect the sky I am going to adjust the mask a bit. So let's click on subtract and then I'm going to use a linear gradient. I don't, I don't want to have anything selected here in the mountains of course and also I don't want to have a mask on the right side where the sunlight is coming in. So this is looking much much better. With the mask adjusted let's bring down the exposure and thus we're just adding a lot of contrast and make this shot just more interesting. Perfect. Then let's also work on the foreground. I'm going to use a linear gradient for that. I just want to cover pretty much the whole foreground. 
In here I'm going to bring up the exposure very very slightly. I'm also going to raise the highlights and I'm dropping the shadows just to add some contrast. And let's add some whites and texture and clarity for details in the foreground. At this point you might think there's a bit too much contrast going on. If that's the case I would suggest to just bring down the contrast. I actually think that might look quite a bit better so let's just go with this for now. Okay now I do want to work on the mountains in the distance and for that reason I am going to use a simple radial gradient and I'm of course just making sure to cover all of them back there. What I want to do here is to just add, add some more detail by bringing up the clarity which always works great for mountain landscapes. Perfect. This also adds a bit of contrast so that's great. I do think I want to add another linear gradient for the very near foreground like this. In here I just want to bring down the exposure slightly because I don't want to get overwhelmed by the brightness down here. Let's also add a linear gradient for the top left of the sky like this and again I'm just bringing down the exposure to create some kind of vignetting effect. All right, then one more mask I want to add. I'm going to use another radial gradient. I'm going to make it really thin, but rather wide. Again, using it to add some special glow to the right side by just bringing down the dehaze. And I'm going to drop it quite a bit to have a very heavy glow effect going on. Perfect. So here we have the image of the masking adjustments. You can see we have again changed quite dramatically. I really like how the glow came out in this version. So next up the color grading. For that let's go on in the HSL panel. Looking at the image you can see there are a ton of yellow tones going on. Which I'm not a big fan of in this case. What I want to do to fix it is to just bring down the yellow hue and just adding a lot more orange to the image. I can also bring up the red hue, but this won't change the image as much as the dropped yellows. All right, that looks much better already. Now let's switch over to the saturation tab. Here I just want to bring down the yellow saturation because at the moment it's just too much. Looking much nicer this way. But let's also bring up the orange saturation just a bit. Okay. And then I'm thinking about adding some blue saturation as well. That looks pretty nice. All right then. Let's head over to the luminance tab. Here I just want to bring up the orange luminance, which will add some more highlights to the foreground as I push it upwards. And that's it for the HSL stuff. At the moment we still have some pretty natural light, but I do want to change that with the split toning in the color grading panel. Here with the highlights. Since I want to make this shot warm, I'm going to use a warm hue for the highlights. So maybe somewhere in this range. And now I'm pushing the saturation like crazy to get a strong warm color cast going on in the highlights. Perfect. And in the midtones. Again, I'm going with a warmer hue, somewhere in that range. And I'm bringing up the saturation, but just use a lower amount to not overdo things. Perfect. To get some color contrast, I'm going to head into the shadows and just go with a blue hue. And a very low amount of saturation. Nice. Finally, we can head down into the calibration tab. And here what I want to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. And instead of pushing the saturation, I'm going to drop the saturation this time. All right, that looks great. Now we're pretty much done. The last thing we want to do is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius all the way while increasing the details all the way up. 
Then I'm applying some masking and by holding down Alt key I can see where the sharpening will be applied. So that's looking like a solid mask. Now let's raise the amount of sharpening. And that's it for editing this image in Lightroom. So I hope this was an interesting and helpful tutorial. If you have any questions left as always feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.